Hey everyone, welcome to episode four of At Home with Baby Gizmo. Today we're taking you inside the heart of the home, the Baby Gizmo Kitchen. Welcome back. Now this is the Baby Gizmo Kitchen, and I know you've seen different glimpses of it in different food videos we've done lately, but today I wanted to give you a full tour. Now this is going to be different than the room tours we've given you of the other rooms in the different episodes, and that is because the kitchen didn't need a lot of accessorizing or a lot of decorating once we moved in. All of the magic happened at the Builders Design Center when we were building the house. So I went to the Design Center and I picked out everything in this kitchen so that I knew it was going to be exactly like I wanted. And so today we're going to go through all of my different choices, why I chose them, to maybe give you some ideas if you're looking to build a house or you're looking to redo your kitchen or maybe you just want to see what my kitchen looks like. So let's take a look. First, my home has a very open concept. You right now are standing in the family room. Now, I'm not ready to show you the family room yet because it's not ready for its big reveal. That will be in a few episodes. But this right here, we have an eat-in kitchen, which means we can put our kitchen table right here in this large space. This table we got a couple years ago at Ashley Furniture. It's held up great, looks great. It's large enough for my family of five plus a few guests. I absolutely love the lighting fixture above the kitchen table. I chose this at the design center because it's brush nickel. I thought it was modern. It made the kitchen pop. And the white glass pieces up here, I thought went with the cabinet. So I think it all kind of went together really, really beautifully. And this is where we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Next to the kitchen table are two large windows and a patio door that goes out to our deck. We have an amazing view of the trees, but I knew I wanted to cover the windows just in case I wanted to close them up. So I chose the Simplicity Shutters from Blinds.com and I love them for so many reasons. First of all, we installed them ourselves and it was so easy that we recruited grandma to help us install these and she was a great sport and it was so easy to do. Even the kids could help. Now first, I can open and close them like this but also lake shutters, I can open an entire door if I wanted to open the window. Now, what I love about that is if I open the window on a, you know, a great day, I wanted to get some air in here, I can then go ahead and close the door for extra protection from the kids with the open window. Our house is situated on a hill, so it is quite a bit of a drop if they fell out the window. And we have child locks, of course, but it's just an extra deterrent with the kids having these shutters. Now, like I said, so easy to install them. All we had to do was screw in the frame to the window frame and attach the door and we were done. I know a lot of people are kind of freaked out by shutters and they might, you know, take a long time or be really hard to install. They are not. We had the entire house done in a weekend, pretty much an afternoon. They're that easy. So I've got two simplicity shutters on this wall and we also have a simplicity shutter right above our kitchen sink. So when I'm doing dishes that the sun doesn't get in my eyes. Believe it or not, the kitchen sink was a really big decision for me in the design center. You could either get two sinks that were equal size, one that was a smaller sink with a larger sink or one big sink like they call it a farmer sink. And I've always had two sinks and I've always had the dish drainer there and I've always stacked up the dishes. And so I was torn. I really liked this one because I could put cookie sheets in there. I bake a lot, really large pots and pans and I could soak them in there. So I took a leap and that's the one I got. I got the one big sink and I love it. Now I'm not gonna tell you that I don't throw a dish drainer in there from time to time on one side in case I'm in a hurry or I wanna just dry some dishes there, I do. Um, but for the most part, I can remove that dish drainer if company's coming over or if I need some, you know, to do some big pots and pans. I love the faucet because it has this, it has the hose, so I can get in every corner of the sink. Um, so I really, really like the sink. I like the choice that I did do one, even though I'd never tried it before. I think it works out great for us. Let's talk about the cabinets and the island for a minute. First of all, I have this great big large island and I absolutely love it. Now first, I could have put the stove in the middle of the island. I could have put a vegetable sink, but I chose not to do either. And I chose to keep it completely open. And the reason I did that is because this is where everybody gathers. They all gather around the island. This is where I make lunches. This is where I do food prep. This is where I do my food videos. I needed that space open. If I would have put a stove right here, first of all, it would have been too close to the kids sitting at the countertop. So I didn't like that. It would get really, really dirty easier. I didn't like that. And it would take up my big open space. So I completely left the island open because this is where the kids do eat breakfast from time to time on these three stools. 
Let's talk about these stools really, really quick before we get to the cabinets. I love these stools. I got these stools at Crate and Barrel. They are easy to clean. There's no cushion to get completely dirty with whatever they're eating. They spin so the kids can kind of turn around on them. But I like the fact that they tuck under the island so they're out of the way. They don't have backs on them, and I chose these on purpose because, um, to be honest, my dad has one of his backs, and the kids spin them constantly so they hit the counter and damage the stools. So I was like, we're not doing that. <laughs> so I went with backless, easy to clean stools from Crate and Barrel. So let's talk about these cabinets. Now, as you see, my island is different color than the rest of the kitchen, and that is very trendy right now. Will it be trendy in five years? I don't know, but you know what? I don't care because I really, really like it. First of all, all the kitchens I've had so far have been dark wood, and I love, you know, dark cabinets, but I wanted to switch it up. I wanted to do white, um, but I didn't want to do bright white. So what I chose is antique white, and I absolutely love what it looks like. It brightens up the kitchen. It looks very clean. So the perimeter cabinets are all antique white. And then we switched it up with the island and we went with a darker cabinet. I think it gives a great contrast. I think it's different. I think it makes the kitchen unusual, but fun and a little bit trendy. One other thing I did too with the cabinets is on the side of the island and on the side of the exterior cabinet over here, I had them do the um, upgrade, which makes it look like the front of the cabinet. So it's not just a flat board. It has some dimension. I think that looked really good. It was kind of like a fancier feature. I think it's totally worth it. So we have the island here and then the all of these cabinets, like I said, antique white is what I chose and I love them. Let's talk about the counters and the backsplash for a minute. Now the counters, we chose granite and this granite is called Azul Platino. Now I will put links on everything underneath the video so it'll be easy for you to find, but I love it. It goes with the gray and the whites that are in this kitchen. I think it looks beautiful. It doesn't scratch really easy and because it is a tight speckle, it doesn't show a lot of marks. Um, I really love it and I did an eased edge. Now you wouldn't believe how many different edges you can do with granite. I was surprised you can do round, you can do square, you can do... So I chose the eased edge and I'm happy with it. Um, I think it will chip less. Um, I don't plan on abusing the granite. So um, again, it's called Azul Platino. Now the backsplash. Now I changed my mind a couple times on this because the first one was a big, bigger tile that was in a basket weave and it just wasn't sitting right. And so this one, I'm so glad what we ended up with. Now this is called the Emser Natural Marble and Silver. It is in a Versailles pattern mosaic laid straight. Now, if that makes any, <laughs> any sense to you, but I think it looks great. Again, I think it goes really well with the countertops and the cabinets. I love the whites and silvers in it. I think it just gives the kitchen that finished look. Before we get to appliances, I want to talk about the hardwood floor. This hardwood floor is throughout our first floor, and I love the choice we made. This is a Shaw hardwood flooring. It is called Shaw Nottaway Hickory in the Stonehenge color. Now, I love that it's dark, but it's like a hand-scraped wood floor, which means it's going to naturally have, um, you're going to see the wood, you're going to see marks. That way, I don't stress about every single scratch my kids make in it. Um, it's really, really durable. We chose it because of the durability. Now, we don't have pets, so we don't have dogs or anything running around to scratch it up more, so I don't know how it would hold up to pets. But I think it's held up, especially with my two boys, really well. I still get the dark, rich color that I wanted, but I'm not going to see every scratch. So I really, really like the flooring. Now let's get to the appliances. And what better way than to start with my microwave? Now, my microwave is, yes, down here in my island. Do I have to sit on the floor to use it? No. <laughs> but I just saw, showed you the flooring, so we're okay. Um, this is the microwave. I chose all Whirlpool appliances. They are stainless steel to go with the gray and white feel. Um, this is just your typical microwave. It is not one of those drawer ones. Um, works out good. And the reason I have this is I kind of had to have it. I really wanted a double oven. I need a double oven for my baking. And the only way it would work with my kitchen setup was to put the microwave down in the island. Now, if you have toddlers, I would not suggest this because this is like at their height. They would just play with it all day long. But luckily my five-year-old, we have taught him that he doesn't get to play with it. Now at first he was like, woohoo, um, and I was like, no. <laughs> no, you don't get to even use it because I'm afraid he'll put like a fork in it one day. Um, but 
you do have to bend down to get things in and out, but to get my double oven, I was willing to do it. Um, it works great. It's out of the way. I didn't need this extra cabinet space anyway, because um, I got plenty of cabinets throughout the kitchen. I also have a Whirlpool dishwasher that's on the other side of the kitchen, and I have a side-by-side -side with the freezer underneath a refrigerator. I'm not going to open up the refrigerator because I didn't clean it out to make it all pretty for a refrigerator reveal. <laughs> so you're just going to get to see the outside. Like I said, it has a water dispenser, and this is my double oven that I had to put the microwave in the island, but it was worth it because I have my double oven. There's just a few other things I want to show you before I say goodbye today, and that's first of all, I have a trash drawer. Now, I don't know why I want to show you this. I just love it because I hate seeing a trash can out in a kitchen. Now, of course, I took my trash out of it, so I looked all nice and neat. Um, but this is where all our trash goes, our recycles, and our regular trash, and it tucks away in there. I also love the lighting above the island. This was an upgrade, and I love the fact that there is no glass on this. It just looks really cool, but I don't have to constantly be cleaning glass. It really lights up the kitchen, matches the other lighting fixture well, and goes with the gray and white theme. So that's it. That's the Baby Gizmo Kitchen. What did you like best about it? Leave us a comment and let us know. Also, we have a giveaway starting today from Blinds.com, so check out the link underneath the video to enter. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for our next episode that goes inside the Baby Gizmo office on Thursday, November 13th at 9 a.m. Eastern Time right here on our YouTube channel. So that's it for me. I will talk to you later. I'm Holly Schultz from Baby Gizmo. Bye.